Zed Mahouski, I'm a fish biologist with the uh, Inland Fisheries Division for the state of Connecticut. And this is one of the things that we use, one of the methods we use for fish capture. Um, we, we have a variety of methods, both different types of nets um, and other uh, gear, and this is just one of them. And this is actually an electroshocking boat. We have a variety of electroshocking gear types, one being a backpack and another for small, small streams, another one for larger bodies of water. This one is specifically for large ponds and lakes um, because the other gear types would not necessarily work here. Um, one misnomer with this type of equipment is that it's, it's actually, people call this an electrocution boat. It does not electrocute anything. It's a perfectly safe method for the fish. For us, it's not. If we were to actually put our hand in, we would get severely shocked. But for the fish, what it does is they, the fish orient into the electric current, and I'll go through how the boat works, but they orient themselves into the electric current, and their body shape does not allow any damage really to come to the fish at all, but it pulls the fish up to where we can actually sample them. And it's done by a method called electrotaxis. And now the way the boat works is pretty simple. Um, the, most of the power comes from a generator, and the generator supplies power to a control box that we have full control over how much electrical current is actually going into the water. We measure that and we monitor that by, the, uh, by taking a, a sample of the water first just for conductivity. And conductivity meaning the mineral content in the water and how much electrical current it's going to carry. So once the thing is all powered up, we've got a crew of usually about five people and there'll be two netters up front here and then there'll be two people behind that'll be processing the fish and then we have a driver that actually maneuvers the boat around the shoreline as we move throughout the night. One of the reasons we go out at night is because number one, the glare on the water during the day, we could not see small, because we're out here sometimes for any size fish, small to large. We wouldn't be able to see the fish with the glare on the water, but at night with the lights they cut through the water, we're able to see much, much better. So the people up front have control of the final switch that completes the circuit for the boat. Once the pedal is pushed, the switch is, is engaged and the electrical current goes into the water. These are the positive probes on these booms and the negative probes are, on, are attached to the boat. Sometimes it's actually the boat hull itself, but these are the electrical uh, or the, uh, the negative probes for the, uh, which complete the circuit. So the fish actually come up right up near the positive probe and the netters can actually reach them at that point, net them, bring them into the boat, put them into a live well, and then we can take whatever data we want from those fish. Um, once the pedal is off, the current is off, and that's basically how the boat works. We use this on a variety of lakes for a variety of projects. Like I said, tonight what we're actually doing is just looking specifically for walleye. Batterson Park Pond here in New Britain is a walleye lake that was stocked, uh, I forget when it was stocked uh, first, but it's been quite a few years. They're actually doing very well in here, but this is a way that we can monitor the different year classes of walleye so that we can get a sense of how they're doing, how big they're growing, um, how fast they're growing, and if there's a problem or not. Yellow perch, walleye.
the best of the best. Keep it. Dead bass. Yeah. Wow. Another one. We got a bracket rod over there right now. Jeez. Shortage of big bass. Alright, so this is what we were out looking for tonight was um, was specifically for walleye. Um, what we, uh, what we can get off of these fish is quite a bit of information just between length and also not just the length, um, but we also want to know how fast these fish are growing uh, depending on their size. And one of the ways we can do that, there's a bunch of ways, one is to actually cut right into their head and take the ear bones out, but the problem with doing that is that you're going to end up killing the fish. So it's a lot easier to actually remove some of the scales that are on the, um, and we take it from a specific spot on the fish, and these, get them back in the, water. the um, these scales, you won't be able to pick it up on, uh, on the film, but when you magnify that just a little bit, it actually looks like uh, uh, growth rings on a tree. So we're, we can actually go through after we get the, uh, the scale sample and process the uh, the scales what we would actually do with these is um, once we get these back we'll wash them and then we'll take a uh, specific press and we'll press the image of the scale onto a plastic sheet um, and then we can take that sheet and put it onto a uh, uh, projector or an old microfiche machine and it'll project the image up much bigger and we can actually at that point go through and count the annual rings um, we can just by that sample alone we can take the the uh the specifics of that fish uh the sex the um uh the time of year that it was caught and the length and let's say that fish was three years old uh, we can go back at that point and tell you exactly how big that fish was at age one age two and then what it is now and we can match that up against other f similar species of fish or, or other walleye populations around the state and be able to compare is it good growth bad growth um, how does it compare to the state average you know if there's an issue with forage um, in a you know, like a specific body of water the, the walleye may not or any fish may not be growing all that well and so at least we can kind of get an idea of what's going on in a specific lake and then how that reflects against other populations throughout the state um, just one of the other management tools that we use to try to help manage populations um, throughout the state of Connecticut as best we can.